It is the Riot Podcast. It's a mighty fine Thursday, August 18th. Very good. Yeah. Mighty fine. <laughs> mighty fine. <laughs> Super glad tomorrow will be Friday, obviously. And mm-hmm. just to let you know, JD will be joining us tomorrow, a band we play here on Radio U. Very good. Mighty fine. So don't forget it. Yeah. <laughs> so during the show today, one of the things that we did is we went over what some of our uh, pet matches look like there is a website that we found where you could essentially fill out a profile and it would match you with dogs that are looking to be adopted in the surrounding area is it your most compatible with that we spend so much time doing that i know (laughs) yeah we really (laughs) none of us are looking for a dog (laughs) either but it was fun it was fun and i also can't help but uh that my mind keeps being drawn to when we say like pets in your surrounding area where you like sometimes you'll see the ads online that pop up that are like uh, single women in your area want to meet you. And it's like, little dogs in your area want to meet you. Want to be adopted by you. Yeah, they do. it's pretty and weird. So we, uh, we found out that the quiz you can take, you'll learn more about how it disappoints us because we are disappointed in ourselves and our answers. <laughs> uh, but it's really cute and it's fun to try, especially if you are looking to adopt a dog. So if you guys were to get another dog, do you like, I mean, obviously in your mind, Nikki, you obviously already have three. But if you were to get another one, do you have like a breed in your mind that you would pick for your next dog? Hmm. Oh, what time? Yeah, of what type of dog that you would pick. Because for me, I know that if I got another dog, I would get a Basset Hound again. Unfortunately, I would get a Basset Hound again. I swear to you, I would. I don't know if I can own a dog that's not a Basset Hound. But you've never experienced the joy of other dogs I know. So you don't know. They'd be way more like joyous i'm sure like they'd probably be way better behaved like way less stinky all the things that come with jim but that just make them such a sweetheart Aww. you know and so i don't know if i could ever have a dog that's not a basset because i feel like once you have a basset on you just never go back you know i think i would go with uh boxer Ooh, a boxer yeah, that so, would be perfect i don't know maybe they're a little big right they're a little high energy i feel like for you i don't know i th- they weren't showing up on my match list. So oh, they weren't? Maybe not for me after all. I don't know. I just always thought that'd be fun. But maybe like a smaller, like a Boston Terrier is one I always thought about, too. Cute. A Boston Terrier. Yeah. Real cute. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah it's may- I probably do need something smaller if I was going to get another one. Well, I've always had, uh, always had, I had two miniature schnauzers in my lifetime, and I've always wanted a giant schnauzer. Uh, so a I, big one? A big one. Mm. I think that'd be cute. And then I had a Mastiff, and he was one of my, oh my, my favorites. Wow. Talking about real big. Total so, opposite, but yeah. it's really hard to have the bigger dogs. Like, he only lived for seven years. Yeah. And that's, like, how long they live. Yeah. And it was really hard towards the end because they, they have problems and, like, you can't lift him. Uh, but I would love a Mastiff again if I didn't have to go through all that. But then I also thought, like, a Great Dane, like a super, super oh, tall yeah. dog. But, I mean, they just have so many troubles. So. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of, like, issues that come with, obviously, those bigger dogs. When I lived uh, in Kentucky, uh, the apartment complex I lived in, there was two big Great Danes Aww. that lived there, and they would always go to the dog park, and they were so sweet. So and nice. like, it was so funny because like when they would like get like running, like obviously they're huge and they're running around, and like yeah. their legs are super long. It's like watching a moose. They would just like Jim would be running around too, and they would just be jumping over him because he's like the lowest of low dogs, <laughs> like he's so short. And so he was like trying to play with them, and they were like running with him, and they would just jump over him so effortlessly, effortlessly, <laughs> and it was uh, it was a fun time back Aww, uh, well, let's stop because then i will get another dog stop it we just need one more dog we need a great for the show if you adopt one more we just need one more dog no i cannot i cannot <laughs> we also talked about how uh we're sleeping all wrong and i i wanted to bring this up on the on the show today but last night was the first night and i don't know how long that I slept all the way through the night without waking up. Hey. Really? And it was incredible. Like, I woke up shocked. Like, when my alarm went off, I was like, whoa. Like, usually I wake up, like, at least an hour before, like, my alarm goes off or Jim wakes up and has to go to the bathroom. Like, he usually always has to go to the bathroom at least, like, once every single night. And so I'll take him out. But last night was the first night in probably, like, months that I slept all the way through the night and I woke up and I was like, wow, Aww. it's time for me to wake up, which felt That's so good. That's too bad. He slept through him crying, probably. <laughs> oh, no. He didn't pee in the house that I saw. Maybe when I get home, I'll be like, oh, he did pee this morning. Well, I mean, he at least didn't wake you up. <laughs> but yeah, we ta- also talked about uh, Chipotle bringing a new piece of merchandise to uh, their stores, not any food related, but uh, kind of an issue that they've been apparently struggling with, with for years now that's I think we've all participated in at least once. 
I've never done it. No, yes, you have. No, that is a lie. You're telling me that you've never gotten a water cup and gotten something different. I never did that. Well, now, hang on. Do you mean have we ever at Chipotle gotten a water or cup? Or just in general? And in stole general. lemonade. And just in general. I've never <laughs> in my lifetime taken a water, under false pretenses, taken a water cup and went to the soda fountain. He's an honest guy. I've never done it. And you've never gotten a sip of something else? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not convinced. Does it, is it bad if you go to like a gas station or something, or uh, and you want to get the fountain soda, and you get a sip of something, and then you dump it out, and then you fill it with something else? See is what I'll bad? do, which is even worse than that, is I'll get like a uh, one of the cups. Uh-huh. I'll go fill up some of the slushy. I'll take a drink of it, and I'll just throw the cup away, and I'll leave. No. You will not. I will do You're that, yes. I swear I'll do that. If I'm getting gas, like if I'm filling my truck up all the way from zero to the top, I'll, while it's filling up, I'll walk inside, I'll go get one of those cups, and I'll try a couple of the for, uh, <gasps> of the of the ices, knowing that I'm not going to buy one. I'm not going to buy an, a whole icy, but I'll try a couple different the flavors if they have any cool ones, and, and, then, throw then, I'll, and then I'll throw it away, and I'll just walk out. You're the worst. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, it no. is a bad thing. You think that's bad? That's a horrible thing. You think thing. that's wrong? I just go in there, I fill up a couple, just a little slip of each. That is clearly wrong. I mean, it's not wrong. I mean, am I really stealing? Yes. yes. Just a sip of each slushy. Is uh, it stealing? It's yes. definitely stealing. Well, nobody's it's ever called me out on it. I'm just trying them. I'm trying them. I'm trying them. Let me see your wallet. Let me see your wallet and let me just take a tiny bit of money. But just a couple cents. <laughs> just a couple cents. <laughs> see, I'm not, I'm just trying them to see if I really want them. But you said you have no intention of buying. Yeah, but they don't know that. Oh and they're my not gosh. offering it for you to if try. If they said something to me, if they were like, hey, sir, uh, you tried some of that. You aren't going to get it. I'm like, ah, oh, well, I thought I'd like it. I wanted to make sure before I, I went the whole way. I can't believe you've never run into a gas station owner in the thing. And he's like, excuse me, you need to pay for that. I've done that probably happened. like 50 times. Oh, stop. Oh for sure. I, if you're Think going about how many ices the, that adds up to. I mean, it's you. like six ices for sure. But I'll just get a little sip of it. You know, try that one. Get a little sip. Try the other one. That's not wrong. I know <laughs> listeners have done this. If you haven't, you They're should. They're also wrong. If you haven't, you should do it. If you're filling up from the bottom to the top, it takes a long time. Walk inside, have a couple sips of a couple different ices, throw it away, and walk out and continue on your day. You. I can't no believe one. A little refresher. No one do that. You're no a morally one, no bankrupt one. human being. It's not morally wrong. I don't want to hear any more because I'm just going to be disappointed. Well, oh um, I guess do we want your inputs and thoughts on that? Are we just going to move on to the rest of the podcast? We all Jackson. agree that he's wrong. <laughs> Text in, do You're it. all going to text Agree. in and say hi at least at 8772 Radio U. Is that it? I, that's I, it. I hope that's I mean, we're, it. Yeah. We're going you, over so now. You don't want to reveal anything else. Nope, that's yeah, all we're getting. Yeah, continue. I'm sure I've stolen something else. <laughs> Have a good day. Hey, guys. Guys. And remember, it's just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> you won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. If you've ever dreamt of giving it all up and uh, moving out to the country somewhere and living as a cowboy or a cowgirl, you're not alone. Oh, more people are feeling that. It turns out, uh, I don't know what the numbers are here in the U.S., but a recent survey in the U.K. found that nearly 75 percent, about three quarters of people in the U.K. uh, would give up their nine to five, you know, give up their current job to be a cowboy or cowgirl in the United States. Is this because of like uh, Yellowstone still being something? Are or? you joking? Because that's actually why Is they it, did no, this. No, absolutely. Because people have a perception of it from a TV show uh-huh. and that's what they would think that's it'd be what like. I'm, if, uh, I wonder if in the UK they just think we're all cowboys and cowgirls basically. There, there's there's two kinds of America, If I feel, if you live outside of North America. Yeah. There's New York City and and there's Cowboy. <laughs> Those are the two options you have if you're an American. Oh, the UK, you'll be very disappointed to know we're just normal people yeah. who are neither. It's a lot more boring than either of those, actually, for most people. But and they, don't they realize, like, to us, uh, I guess, non-Cowboy people uh-huh. or non-New York City people, uh-huh. uh, that seems like a lot of work to be a Cowboy. It does, right? I don't want to do that. I, whatever job you have in the UK, sitting in an office or, I mean, I know there's no air conditioning in a lot of places there but you know like what a nurse even that's probably less work than being a cowboy mm-hmm. and having to wrangle things or like a farmer i kind of consider the two there. yeah have you ever tried to lasso something no i have not yeah i don't because it's hard i know i don't think any job that depends on me lassoing anything 
it's going to be a job that I get fired from. Also, you know how you're like, I don't want to work on the weekends. Uh-huh. Like if you're a farmer or a cowboy or a cowgirl. Yeah. And if you are in charge of uh, animals yep. <laughs> or crops. That's a full time. You have to work like on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> it's every day. You have to work on the weekends. You have to get up at the crack of dawn. You know, like when your dog bothers you because he gets up early. Uh-huh. Imagine like a whole herd of things. That's the rooster it doing is. that. I didn't know. Do they have roosters on ranches? Probably, you know, that's more. See, cattle, we don't know. More about cattle and uh, and the horses. So, that yeah, they say 75% of people would give it all up uh, in the UK and move to the US to be uh, a cowboy or a cowgirl. They also say that just because they say in part because it's so expensive, mm-hmm. like they're, you know, they're feeling inflation too. Uh, about 50% of people are uh, more likely to pursue their dream of leaving the country for a simpler homestead life. Ooh. That's that sounds more your speed, right? I, the homesteading. I would be a, a homestead person over a cowboy. That's but that's a full time job too, and that's uh, like no, not if I have a, a homesteading husband. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that makes you, so you're going to be the homestead princess. It I would. Like. I would like to of my homesteading castle. <laughs> yeah. So you uh, so you would get uh, Eric. To just do all the harvesting and the gardening and well, stuff like that. the day-to-day activities. Uh, yeah. he, he'd have to spread the manure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> he'd well, have to, yeah, do all that. Uh, so, that they, uh, so they're th- thinking about that as well. And this actually is uh, because of a survey uh, brought by Paramount Plus they were finding out about. I don't know if Yellowstone in the U.S. season four is out now, right? And it's been out for a while, but... In the UK, I don't know if it's maybe they haven't launched that yet and it's coming or they just wanted to re-promote it or something. But that's what they that's why this survey is out there. Mm. And that is why people probably have a more romantic idea of what being a well, then you're not watching a ranch them, hand. Cause... That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit more. There might be some uh, murders involved or Here's something too. some top 10 cowboy culture phrases used by Brits from this study. Uh, number one, <laughs> howdy. And so we can add this to our day to day. If you want to feel more Yellowstone. Wanna, yeah, sure. Uh, two, howdy partner. Uh, of course. Three, make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> <laughs> Four, peckish. Uh, five, yellow belly. Six, uh, Play second fiddle. Seven, been through the mill. Uh, hmm. Eight, whole hog. Uh, oh, nine, I love that one. Above board. And ten, cow rustling. We're going whole hog That's on right. the show today. So uh, I'm feeling a bit peckish. Yeah. Oh, I'm always peckish. <laughs> so let's go uh, get the hay. Yeah. Make, wait, make hay while the sun's still shining. Not hit the hay. That's when you're ready to go to bed. That's right. We have to make the hay to hit the hay. I didn't know you had to make hay. <laughs> That's one of the many difficult things. What do cowboys do? (laughs) Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com Zaya, you are our resident Chipotle fan. Are you guilty of this when you go to Chipotle? Are you still going to Chipotle a lot? I go to Chipotle decently regularly. I would say like uh, probably like once a week. Maybe so it's still a treat? It's a treat. treat? It's a treat. treat. (laughs) You know, I go every now and then. It feels real special when I do. I feel like Isaiah it tends to like you like one thing and you stick with it for a while. Yeah, it's usually what happens. I'll get into swing and things. Like there was a week or two ago when I ate canes like every single day mm. for like seven days straight. You're a creature of habit. Uh so when you go to Chipotle, do you ask for a water cup? I and- don't usually unless I'm gonna sit down inside, which is very rare. Okay. And when you do ask for a water cup? Do you fill it with lemonade? Oh. oh, you're asking me if I steal yeah. on the radio? Uh-huh. I have stolen in the past, but I don't <laughs> steal anymore. I don't He's, really drink lemonade not. anymore. Like I don't really I wouldn't want it more than I'd want water. Uh-huh. But back in the day, oh, I loved stealing uh, lemonade. It felt yeah, so wrong, yeah. but like not wrong enough to where I could actually get in trouble, you he's, know? He's reformed. He's he's a new man. We I've changed to, now. We used to hate people so like this, you. Oh, Panera. cut it. You guys yeah. that is the worst. This, this is what's ridiculous. <laughs> This is what's ridiculous about like fast food workers, right? You guys don't care. It's we not do. coming out of your paycheck. It doesn't even matter. It does. If I, That's why. If I get instead of getting lemonade at Chipotle instead of a water, even though I got the water cup and it was free, the cashier that rang me up is not getting cents taken off of their paycheck but if because I stole a little yeah. bit of lemonade. But if That's everybody's right. stealing. Now, I thought That's... originally this was more like if you get water from certain places, you get a little hint of other 
things coming out of oh, the machine. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, like, I didn't know if Chipotle is just known for having water, but it always picks up a tiny bit of lemonade. Because it comes mm. out of the same tube. Yeah, because yeah. it's, like, <laughs> the in same the same spout. area. But instead, this is for people who are uh, accidentally yeah. hitting lemonade and taking that with their water. They know what you're doing at Chipotle. And it's, I mean, Chipotle is acting like it's a thing special to Chipotle. But like I said, people. That's every place. Well, I guess they didn't do it with lemonade because it wasn't out and about in the main area from the fountain but people did that at Panera when I worked there I bet you were crushed by that I bet you were just distraught (laughs) over people taking root beer or lemonade instead of water my paycheck was so much smaller because you know like I was making minimum wage I can imagine and the, the executives kept coming and visiting and say look if you can stop people from stealing the root beer then you, we would double your salary. I'm sure that's what they did, just like keep you a little, <laughs> stringing you along like yeah. that. Well, that's, how they, about, they blamed you instead yeah. of themselves. Let me buy you the candle then, okay? <laughs> uh, so basically, Chipotle is offering a lemonade-scented candle, kind of in honor, but it's being called the water cup candle. And Chipotle will be selling it. Uh, it looks like it's in a Chipotle cup itself, but then the candle has a yellow color, like their lemonade. And it goes on sale uh, today is today. when it goes. And you get a free lemonade with every purchase. Oh, and, wow. Uh, it's on honor, or I think, of National Lemonade Day, which is coming up. Uh, that's on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get to celebrate that way. And uh, they say a free lemonade. And then once you burn this candle out, you can take that back in the and cup? refill it. Yeah, take the cup back in and fill it with as much lemonade as you want over and over. So it's not a paper cup, is it? It's just like a ceramic cup? I don't know. It sounds dangerous if it's a, paper a candle. Cup? Yeah. I don't know. It could be covered in something. Wax, <laughs> which is be. also flammable. So do you want the, anybody want the Chipotle candle? I feel like it would make your house look kind of dirty because it does look like a like a cup. <laughs> it looks like you just like finished Chipotle and you just set the cup like on the counter in your room. But if you're burning it. If you're you burning it, you can tell. But if you're not burning it, it's just sitting there. Also, it just looks like you just didn't throw the cup away. You could literally just make this yourself too if you go to Chipotle and ask for a water cup and they're like, oh, he's going to put lemonade in it. Little do you know, little do they know you're going to take it home and put a lemonade candle in it. You mm. buy those scented waxes from the uh, Walmart or whatever. I now, didn't know Chipotle has so many merch items. They have a lot, yeah. Do you think it's wrong? This is another thing I do too. I'll get like a water cup or whatever and I want water but like maybe I'll get like a little splash of root beer, you know, just first. Like just like a sip of it uh, and then sure. I fill it up with water. Uh, is that wrong? That doesn't bother me too much. But Sometimes the whole cup though? Sip. Yeah, yeah, I just, want a, little, I just want a little taste, a right. little sugar, you know? I just want a little stealing. I just a little, little <laughs> bit. So it's like called sip stealing. They had like a commercial for that years ago, like little sip steals and then, uh-huh. you, and then you get that, whatever you're supposed that doesn't, yeah. that doesn't bother me, but I'll tell you the big problem they have at Chipotle that they need to worry about more is the people stealing the bottles of Tabasco and stuff. Oh, sure. Because mm. people will just walk out with those. And what? It's free. Uh, it's it ve- going to be used up eventually. I'll just use it up all at once at my home one day. That's not how it works. They need to. They need to stop. <laughs> they have a that. flurry of problems there. Another they one. Do. They, they don't give me enough steak whenever I'm uh, going through. They'll mm-hmm. just give me like a little bit. I'm like, come on, yet again, not coming out of your paycheck. Pile it right. on there. I don't want just a little bit of rice. I want a lot of rice. A little bit of steak. I want a lot of steak. Okay. Stop giving me the small <laughs> scoop. Do. Quit they have doing a lot it. Of problems. All right, Chipotle's just like, hey guys, we we're just talking about the candle. Why are you now bringing up everything wrong? But I do like going, <laughs> and I am a regular customer. I do like the food. I would just appreciate if you gave me larger portions. Okay. Well. Although that's noted. <laughs> this is the riot. Radio U. Who's ready to add another pet to the mix? Anyone? I, I think it's you. You think it's me? You I do. think you're ready. You uh, are. I don't know. Maybe. I, Isaiah, didn't you mention you were thinking about another dog? I think everybody that has a dog already looks at adopting a dog like once a month just to like keep themselves going a little bit. Uh-huh. But for me, I could never get another dog. But I do like the idea of it, but I won't do it. Don't you think Jim needs a friend? He does need a friend because he doesn't like me very much. Oh, <laughs> that's not true. What he loves me you? too much, actually. Nikki, what's uh, what's What's one more? Uh, I have three. I know. Of What's all one of us more? Here, I don't need another one. You don't. None of us need another one. But don't you want I, another one? I would. Wouldn't it be fun? But all my dogs have particular quirks about them. I know. So wouldn't it be nice to just have one that's just normal? No, I feel like I'm rolling the dice if I try to get another one to be normal. Uh huh. And I'll just have more problems. Well, I I have here for whoever may want to add a new dog or cat to the mix. Uh, a website called Paws Like Me that will match you up with the perfect pet for you. Like a dating uh, app? That's exactly what it's like. It is. You take a personality quiz when you start uh, that asks you a bunch of questions. I did it. 
uh, to see what it's like. It's, uh, it felt, I felt like a lot of pressure was on me. I felt like I was revealing a lot about myself. It's like, do you prefer to boss your other people around or Aww. be bossed around yourself? And I was like, well, I kind of prefer to be bossed around myself, actually. <laughs> I, don't, I guess I don't have what it takes to be upper level management, do I? But that and means it, you, you don't want a dog that would be too demanding. Yeah. So uh, I took the quiz. And so it's matched me up with some dogs here. And I encourage you guys to do it, too. It'll at least tell you a lot about yourself. And uh, again, Nikki, if you take this quiz and you're like, I want a dog that doesn't have any health issues, doesn't need a lot of attention, that doesn't bark all the time, you'll finally find one. Instead of just however you found the dogs you have, no. whatever, who knows kind of way you did that, you could find it the the scientific way. No, I'm just glad my cat Mochi is fine. Uh -huh. Outside of it, it likes to chew on uh, cardboard. Outside of that, we don't have any issues. So you're not even going to take the quiz? Well, okay, if you want me to. Yeah, you got to find out about yourself. I'll tell you what my... So it doesn't just give you like a list of dogs, because uh, I don't care about cats, but it doesn't just give you a list. It also gives you a little write-up about yourself. So here's me. Uh, either due to your lifestyle, because you prefer to relax, you need a dog that is content with a walk down the street or light play in the yard. Ooh. A companion that is happy to lounge around the house with you and enjoy a good book or watch your favorite shows. You like a dog that is fairly easy to train to basic commands and a few fun tricks. Uh, it goes on for a while. But, All right, well, uh, Isaiah, you fill it out, too, and then maybe we'll come back and see who has the better. Well, I already did it, Nikki. You did? You did Unfortunately, it. Nikki hasn't done it yet. No. Hudson and I both came into the segment ready. You, why didn't anybody <laughs> what did you? <laughs> It was awful. on the sheet. You I'm didn't do it. Attention. <laughs> have need... you looked at your matching pets yet, Hudson? Yeah, I did. I wonder if we have some of the same matches. I'm looking now to see. I haven't put up any of my matches yet. Uh, uh I have two. Geesh. I have over 231 dogs that are a good match for me in the area. I'm 228, mm -hmm. so 228? apparently not as compatible. No. Nope. Uh huh. You're harder to get along with. Off of first impressions, when I look at some of these, just some ugly dogs off rip that I'm really not that interested <laughs> in. So I'm swiping <laughs> left on those. Maybe farther down the line, I find a cute one or two. I haven't seen a single basset hound yet. And I'm now like 20 well, in. that's not a good match for you. I guess not. Again, I mean, you didn't find Jim the scientific way. You just flew by the seat of your pants. Sometimes that works out, but a lot of times when you just leave things up to chance, you wind up with uh, with just a horrible, horrible situation like you guys. Let me look in. at me. Yeah. Right. But Jim uh -huh. wouldn't describe this as an ideal dog to parent no. relationship yeah. that we have. Hopefully he's not listening, though. All right, I'm oh, trying no. to take the quiz, guys. It okay? takes a little while. That's why I did it ahead of time. I'm at 31... Percent. Thirty-one percent on the quiz. I feel like it's tough too because like you can like have like I, I think that when when I got Jim, it's tough because like depending on like the atmosphere the dogs in, I feel like that'll depend on like how it behaves. You know, like I feel like a really good dog that's like really well behaved could come to my house, hang out with Jim for like a week, and just become mm. a dog that's just misbehaving and ornery, even if it was a perfect dog before. But don't you think that was covered in the survey? You'd think so, but mm. I feel like once it gets into my atmosphere at my house with Jim as a terrible if I. If I got a puppy and its role model was Jim, yeah. there is no chance that dog turns out to be any better than he is. There's yeah. just no accounting for Jim in the uh, in the Jim the Basset Hound in this survey. But other than that, though, I don't know. I mean, uh, it seems like it could be a very helpful tool. Well, Nikki, why don't you finish up over I'm there? I'm at 58%. And why does it keep asking if I want to take the dog out to exercise? <laughs> I know. It's asking about the exercise. I'm like, I don't want to. I clearly don't want I to. Felt I've said no three times. Sure. I don't want to take it on a walk every day, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. exactly. Me and Jim just hang out. We don't do the whole walk thing. I actually want a hangout dog. That's it. Most of the questions on the survey did make me feel pretty bad pretty about bad. myself. <laughs> well, we'll come back with uh, Nikki's results next. Hudson, Nikki, The Riot on Radio U. We found this new website. It's called Pause Like Me. It will match you up. You take a personality quiz and it will match you up with pets in your area, just like a dating app. Uh, and then you get to decide if any of those pets you'd like to add to your family, cats or dogs. It's up to you. And uh, Nikki just finally filled out, finished filling out the survey. Well, I feel bad now because you're right. This survey makes you feel bad about yourself. It totally does. And bad about how you take care of your current Right. <laughs> it's like, would your friends describe you as empathetic? No. No, no. Uh, do you like dog hair all over everything? No. no. Does that make me a bad person? Do I guess a, so. a neat house or <laughs> yeah. is it just yeah, like, Is it organized or I messy? Think, <laughs> I think it said, is your house uh, messy but cozy? I yeah. was like, oh, yeah. Well, it also kept asking me like, hey, 
would you want to take your dogs out? Like, do you want to take your dog out, like, to do things? <laughs> and I'm just like, no, no, no. Are you ready? Yeah. You enjoy light activity <laughs> with your light. dog, such as a walk around the block or a game of fetch. You prefer a dog that's content to just hang out a big part of the day with little bursts of activity every now and then. You like a dog that's fairly easy to train and it can focus his attention long enough to learn and interact with you. Um, you want a dog that is confident, but you don't mind taking a few minutes for your dog to check out a new person or place before he's relaxed. Mm. And I want a dog that'll snuggle with me, but I don't want a dog that's always in my face. And a dog that is uh, understanding about my feelings would be ideal. All right. So what is your, uh, what is each of your guys, like when they give you the list of matching dogs for you, what yeah. is your top match percentage with one of the local dogs? Mine is Sawyer. And what what percent? A young seven year old uh, male that is in need of a forever home, and it looks like maybe pit bull mix on it. Oh, perfect! What a little cutie. Yeah. Anybody want to adopt Sawyer? Well, <laughs> he's you. like, I want the match be. for you. Well, what's this? Or Sky, who's in a prison program? What's that? Yeah, I know. I found one that was in a prison program too. Does that is that they, good? Or I, I think they go to jails to help with prisoners. Oh, well, that is nice. So I wouldn't want to take him away from that uh my top match is wesley who is a shepherd which feels like that'd be like high energy and a lot of training involved which i specifically said i don't want well it depends how old he is too maybe he's like nine or something yeah i guess chilling. he might already be trained so he is uh i'm a 74 percent match with wesley but also uh brie and mystic the sunshine sisters oh, their nice. healer mixes nice and i also was a 75 percent match with a uh, ramon who is a little terrier mix. He looks like a little ankle biter type dog. And hey, don't say that about Ramon. He's my top match. <laughs> he's got me at 63%. He's my boy. And he looks like a sweetheart. I'd say he's real cool with just chilling out. I, I, I need to bring him around gym so he can just hang out a little bit more. Well, uh, But he's a better match for me. So I think I should get Ramon. Well, how many dogs are you going to take home? Know, you have, know, you have 10 matches that are better than, here. than me. And Ramon probably would not be my first choice. I actually have an, an additional 74. I've got... What is that? I mean, I wouldn't want to separate Bree and Mystic, the Sunshine Sisters. So, <laughs> guys, it's not real. I've You're got, not really. What do you doing... mean? They're real dogs. What I are you I'm about? seriously <laughs> considering adopting another dog. I think yet again, when you start a movement, get Hudson a second dog. Now, what happens though? Because for Nikki and I, like we're both married. So does that mean our significant others each have to take the uh, quiz as well? And what if we get? Wildly different dog matches. Well, then you just you just cross analyze, and then whatever the top dog is that you guys both have, that's the dog that you get. Well, I'm sticking with Sawyer because he likes snoozing in the sun. Oh, so. that sounds so that nice. Sounds nice. He's always up for playing, but he also just likes to chill on the couch. Maybe you should use Sawyer. I know it sounds like a great dog know, for me. Perfect. Did he come up on your list or? No, I didn't really have many matches. I was a real low percentage. Yeah, it sounds oh, like you I'm just don't like want a dog. It sounds okay. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It seems like uh, it seems pretty often. This you can't even find dog matches. <laughs> I know I can't get any for whatever reason. My percentages are so low. Maybe I mean they probably saw like how I've how Jim has turned out, and they're like, he doesn't need another dog. And just how uh, obtuse you are. Generally. Yeah, clearly <laughs> nobody wants to be around you, man or I mean woman or dog. He's been flagged. <laughs> the riot with Hudson and Nikki on Radio U. On Radio U. Uh, now Nikki, what position do you sleep in? Um, I sleep on my side. You do? I do. Ah, that's all wrong. I know. It's supposed to be like the worst. It's horrible Actually, for you. I think if you sleep on your stomach, uh -huh. that's supposed to be the worst, but your side's right after. Who does that? Sleep Who on sleeps your stomach? On their stomach? Uh, first, I shouldn't call it tummy. Uh, uh -huh. Second, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I think it is what it is. Yeah. Well, I have uh, information here that says that... Uh, Anybody who's sleeping on their side or, uh, like you said, on their stomach, doing it all wrong. You're sleeping uh, in a terrible position. It's bad for you and you need to change. Uh, this is coming from dermatologist Michael Jacobs, who is a uh, medical director at Cortina and a clinical associate professor of dermatology at Well Weedle Cornell Medical College. Anyways, he knows about your skin. And he says that you should not be sleeping on your side because when you sleep on your side, your skin uh, folds and there's pressure on one side of your face. Oh, no. So that's going to lead over time 
wrinkles to form. Oh, his name was Michael? Yeah. Uh, Michael, it doesn't matter. I barely sleep, so I don't think I'm clocking in enough It doesn't time. even matter? So, I yeah. mean, it would be this side of my face. Does this side of my face look any, mm, any wrinkles compared to this? You want me to answer that? No, uh, don't. <laughs> I take it back. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I sleep on my side, too. So, But, I mean, he says, um, well, I guess what you really don't want to do, right, based off of this, is sleep on just one side only because mm. then you're going to have one side of your face that's looking all pristine, but the other side is going to be all uh, all wrinkled up and, and messy looking later on in life, and you don't want that. So you're supposed to sleep on your back, which is best, and they say if yeah, you really who cares? care about your skin stuff. Who cares if you got wrinkles on the back of your head? It's not, <laughs> that's not a big deal no as long as you don't it. go bald, uh, which, you know what? Actually, do you think that could make you uh, go bald more um. quickly? No, I mean, sure? I, 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 do we have to worry about this stuff? Are we adding more things to make us worry about when we're actually? It's just going to make night? it harder to sleep. Yeah, it, where harder. else are we supposed to sleep? You're sleeping. What if you sleep sitting up? You then think? you have other medical problems. Oh, how about this? <laughs> what about this, right? You get one of those massage tables where you stick your head through the hole. Oh, down through it. There you go. That's perfect, right? <laughs> I think they're just trying to point out that if you sleep at night, you should be switching positions and trying to change sides. Constantly rolling over, tossing and turning to make sure <laughs> that none of uh, none of your body gets too much pressure put on it. Uh, it's just your mind that is constantly feeling the weight of uh, all the struggles of life. Uh, that that's, is that what we're saying? Well, they're also saying, uh, I think so. Um, <laughs> but they're also saying you should have clean, fresh, uh, pillowcases. Okay. So I think this is also a good reminder to make sure everybody's actually washing your sheets. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that's a worse fear that we should be having. Yeah. I don't do that all that often. And they say that, uh, that if you can get silk sheets, that helps too. Yeah, silk it's sheets to be and good. pillowcases. Even for your hair, that's supposed to be better. I'm sure it is. If I could just afford them. That would be great. You can have, uh, you know, like, like silk. <laughs> like it's right. close enough. Satin? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. The Riot Radio U. This is a tough one. We have a woman in China. Uh, she's getting married. Very exciting, right? Yeah. Uh, she was so excited that she went ahead. She invited all 70 of her coworkers at uh, the, the business she worked at. Way too many. It's 70? Gonna be it's going to be a big wedding. Just of coworkers. It's going to be like, a party. How many people go into the wedding total? Uh, it must have been it must have been quite a lot. She had six tables reserved for her 70 coworkers and it says here she had worked for this company for 5 years and she had over that course of those 5 years attended the weddings of about a third of those 70 people. Yeah. So that's like that's a lot of people getting married in a 5 year span. Well, she also felt that the her relationship with the uh, co-workers mm -hmm. was so good to where if she did not actually invite all 70 mm -hmm. that people would be mad at her well and that some people would be if you invite feel left 35 out. of them that the other 35 might feel left out so she goes ahead she invites every single person she works with and then the wedding day comes around and only one of the 70 oh, show up. I bet she was upset. It's, One of 70? That's such oh, a low percentage. It sounds like it ruined her wedding day. Yeah. Because uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of empty spots there. Yeah. <laughs> she said uh, she was super embarrassed, uh, particularly because, you know, her they're seeing all the empty tables. Her boyfriend's family is there, like her now husband. Uh and, he, you know, they're all seeing, like, this woman, that's obviously where she was meant to have a bunch of guests. It just did Didn't not show. Up. And so she actually, her re response to quitting, or no, her response was quitting. Uh, she decided that because she was so embarrassed uh, by all of her coworkers not showing up, she's not going to work there anymore because it puts such a rift in her relationship with all of them. I don't know. That's a drastic step then. Unless she's a uh, really good employee, like can just find a job anywhere. Uh -huh. Then, I mean, it would be weird to go back. But after like five years, you'd think you'd stick it out. I mean, I guess if you've been working somewhere for five years, my only question is, did everybody RSVP? Like if you RSVP oh, to the wedding sure. yeah, that's... and then 69 of you didn't decide to show up, even though you RSVP, like that doesn't really make any that's sense. That's unclear. I don't know how the, how that works. So maybe like, it's different in Cause China. like also like if you don't have it set up to where like you do RSVP, 
then, like, I mean, still, if 69 of the 70 don't show, that's a bad look. Also, inviting 70 of your coworkers to a wedding is also kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, to invite bad. that many people. But if you don't have the RSVP sh- set up, then that's just uh, well, I mean, poor planning there. They, I'm not sure how, like, Chinese weddings go because uh-huh. it could be different here. Like, you wouldn't put out 70 chairs if someone no, didn't right. RSVP, but it might be different there. Yeah, they might. And, and uh, yeah, she just might not have known, or maybe the people RSVP'd and didn't show up. I'll tell you that. The one person that did show up was the woman's apprentice. So they say, you know, well, she, even felt she probably the one she's felt known obligated. for like three but months, probably the intern. It's surprising that none of the other employees, uh, coworkers, at least felt obligated enough. You know, like out of 70, you would think they'd at least feel like, well, I don't really want to go, but I guess I should. Right. Sure. That is just it's crazy, which leads me to the possibility that I feel is not being explored because, of course, some people are saying, well, the coworkers are horrible. She obviously should leave the company uh, because, the you know, the people she worked with are the worst. Uh, there's also people saying that uh, it's the woman's fault for setting expectations too high. I think there's another unexplored possibility. And that is? Maybe the woman just sucks. <laughs> She's just mean or just Yeah, not, maybe not nobody likes her. I hate, I mean, it's not what she needs to hear right now, but... Uh, Maybe no, you know, sixty nine out of seventy people can't be wrong. You know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe she's just pretty off putting, and so nobody wants to be well, around. We'll her. let you tell her that. Yeah, okay? I'll break yeah, that news. that's like a, such a. I mean, I'm just shocked that sixty nine out of seventy. I think there's more to this story. I think this has to be like a destination wedding or something. Maybe it's like far away. Maybe it's not like really close to where they all live or it's something. There. Because for sixty nine of seventy to not show up, that's such a high number. Think about the money that you're out just based off food alone. Oh yeah. Like hundreds of dollars that you're out just because sixty nine of seventy people didn't show up. Like plates at a wedding are super expensive. So for you not to have RCP set up and for all those people not to show up, like it's a terrible scene at the wedding. So well, whenever if you get married one day and we all don't show up, like none of the office. <laughs> Don't yeah, all eight feel? of you. <laughs> I'll you be cons- so upset. You are. That's in a way that's even worse because we all work so closely together. Oh, I know. Then I'm I come sorry. back on Monday, and it's not like I may see. Like she's probably gonna come back on, or she came back to her job on that following Monday or whatever it is. If she came back for a day, and she probably saw like ten of the seventy there. Aww. Like I would just see you guys immediately on That'd that following Monday. I see moment. Well, it's not sure. a personal thing. It's just no one here likes to go to weddings. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not a personal slight against someone. You're better off just not even inviting us <laughs> that I think and we that's won't best be for offended everybody. either no definitely i might be a little offended <laughs> well if you're not coming anyway <laughs> no, you can't be offended i know but I, you should feel obligated to invite me okay, and then yeah. i'll and then i'll quit afterwards when you don't show up <laughs> here's the problem the... thanks for watching the worst of the riot since you made it this far you might as well like subscribe and check out riot.radio.com for even more, more riot, riot.